Have you ever wondered why people suggest you shouldn't use calcium magnesium into bloom or toward the end of flowering? Well, in this video, we're going to get into it. You're here with Mark Bowell at PerfectGardens.com. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. It's always helpful with the YouTube algorithms. Make sure to check out our membership site where you're going to be able to get priority replies on comments for any people that have questions. You'll be getting exclusive membership only videos because there are so many videos guys I post that are age restricted and barely get out to anyone. And I've realized that if I just remove all of the pictures, it will get out to more people. The issue with that though is people that are here to learn about specific plants lose the opportunity to see pictures that I'm really trying to show you specifics on. You're also going to get emojis that will help bring certain questions to the surface that you think videos should be made on them. Right now I'm getting over 100 questions a day and it's difficult to reply to all of them and I need a better way of prioritizing the questions. I'm definitely going to be still answering as many questions as I can. I give you my word on that although this gives you an opportunity to be part of the creating process on this channel. So before I can tell you just one specific reason why you should or shouldn't do something, I would really like to get into talking about what magnesium and calcium do for the plants. And through that explanation, I think you'll be able to understand why people recommend to not use it toward the end of flowering or in the general blooming stages. So let's go ahead and get into calcium first, and then we're actually going to work our way backwards to magnesium and then go ahead and jump over into phosphorus. Okay, so calcium is an immobile nutrient. And so what does immobile nutrient mean and how can you use it later as you're running into various problems? Well, if you understand whether it's a mobile, immobile, or a semi-mobile nutrient, you, you'll understand how it's going to appear in the plant, whether you have a deficiency or toxicity. Calcium being an immobile nutrient, it's going to appear as a deficiency or excess in the newer leaves. Why is that? It's because an immobile nutrient is used when the plant is growing and developing. So what is calcium used for? It's used for the formation of cell walls and cell membranes. It builds soil structure when you use seashells or bone meal. It feeds the microbes which holds the soil together. That being said, because it's an immobile nutrient, it's only used when the plant is growing something new, you know, like a new structure. Well, after you produce all the stems and the leaves are fully matured out, very little calcium is going to be needed for the rest of the grow. So it, it makes no sense to add in more calcium which will only force your plants to process it in some amount which will only develop more cell structure and when you get into flowering obviously there's no reason to keep packing on thicker stems and more cellulose when that should not be your focus in the flowering your focus in flowering should really be keeping the plant healthy and transporting the trace minerals which leads into the magnesium you guys have probably heard me say this a number of times chlorophyll is the green blood of the plant I love using terminologies like that because in my viewpoint it hopefully will create a closer relationship to you and your garden so magnesium gives your plants the green color. In the chlorophyll molecule, the center of it is magnesium. In later videos, I'll go more into depth about what are amino acids, peptides, and proteins. But basically, just to keep it really simple, amino acids and peptides are comprised mainly of organic compounds, which are carbons, hydrogens, nitrogen, oxygens, and sulfur. And once the plant has all of its nutrients to its leaves, it's really just about maintaining so it's not really about not using magnesium into flowering it's more about not using calcium the issue with this is that most manufacturers put calcium magnesium in the same bottle so they kind of get trumped in together when it's more of excess calcium than magnesium as you go into flowering. This also co comes into play when you're using salt-based fertilizers. When you're using microbiology and you're using rock-based nutrients, the microbiology is going to be controlling the release of various things based upon the exudates that are being produced through the photosynthesis process. The microbes end up retrieving the minerals, the trace minerals, specifically what they need. And as you go later into flowering, you end up using more of the macro minerals in the beginning, so the growing stages, and you really use the trace minerals as you go into flowering. You guys always hear me talk about something called the law of minimum, the law of tolerance, and how all of the minerals work together in various coenzyme reactions and other videos. So I won't dive too much into it. Although, as you can see though, if the plant's healthy, it really goes into magnesium helping to transport the other minerals like phosphorus or iron to do their functions. 
and it's why magnesium is important during the fruiting process. If you are looking for a rock-based nutrient, I would recommend langonite, which has phosphorus, sulfur, and magnesium in it. If you're looking just for magnesium, Epsom salt is also a great solution. This is also why potassium is encouraged during flowering, right? Is because it just doesn't aid in the photosynthesis and food formation. It converts the sugars to starches for long-term use later down the road, right? So like what we we're talking about, we're using the nitrogens, which is an organic compound, and calcium in the growing stages. But when you go into flowering, a different source of energy in a sense needs to be used. And it's those starches that really is going to help fill in those flowers. Potassium helps maintain turgor pressure. So that's the water pressure against the cell walls of the plants. This is also why it's going to help reduce water loss and wilting is because that turgor pressure, more water staying within the plant and less water evaporating away, the plant will be healthier. Right? And a good thought process to think about it is really an ice chest. When you go to the beach, if it's a hot day and you have a thin ice chest, the ice is going to melt. But if you have a nice thick ice chest, the ice is going to keep the drinks cool through the rest of the day. In addition to that, potassium increases protein content of plants, which are, like we talked about, organic compounds, which are amino acids bonded with minerals and water. The water system is the blood transportation system for the coenzyme production and is how potassium aids in activating at least 60 other coenzymes. So think about it that once again, guys, right? So the plants built, all the amino acids are being used, again, the organic compounds are being used, I'm thinking nitrogen initially and calcium and certain immobile nutrients are being used initially for the plant to grow. But once all these little rooms are built in through cells and so on, what really needs to take place? Well, a good water system so that the minerals are transported so other coenzyme productions are being done by the trace minerals. I hope this gives a better understanding of why you don't want to use calcium as you go into flowering, specifically salt-based fertilizers, and how that excess calcium can also actually knock out your potassium a little bit, which once again is going to mess around with your yield and overall inequality. I hope this video was helpful. Please give me a thumbs up, like, share, and subscribe. Have a great grow, everyone. I was actually going to avoid giving a review on this product because I do know both the owners of this company. One of the owners I'm chill with, the other owner I've had conflicts with. That being said, let's go ahead and get into the product. So green cleaner, 